To talk about it with our panelists, Roy Boyd is the sheriff of Goliad County, Texas. Alfonso Aguilar, former chief of U.S. Office of Citizenship and the director of Hispanic Engagement for American Principles Project. Uh, welcome to you both. Sheriff, can, can I start with you? Just talk to me about what um, these guards members might be experiencing and how dangerous um, some of their jobs and, and duties can be. Well, I think you got to remember there's been about 10,000 troops that have been deployed to the border as a result of Operation Lone Star. And they are being deployed to a war zone where millions of people are being brought across the border by armed cartel members that are bringing them up and pushing them across. And so it's a very hostile environment for them to be in. And so, you know, it's always a tragedy whenever you lose somebody. I know that we've lost 17 members of the National Guard as a result of the operations that are going on. But you have to put that in uh, comparison to uh, the rest of the United States. According to the CDC in 2022, our average uh, rate of death in the United States was 79.8 people per 10,000 in the general population. So I think the military and the state of Texas have done a really good job of, of doing the best they can to try to, to keep these Guard members safe while they're down here on this dangerous deployment. Yeah, Alfonso, it, it just points to really how dangerous. Maybe you didn't take this into account. This is not taking your ticket at a movie theater as you cross the line going in. These men and women uh, put their lives on the line literally serving the, that border, protecting, securing that border. Your thoughts? Uh, absolutely. It's a tough job under difficult uh, conditions, under difficult circumstances. But their, but their role is absolutely necessary. They're, they're playing a vital role, a vital role as part of uh, Operation Lone Star to uh, stop illegal immigrants from entering Texas and, uh, and dissuading others for trying to enter illegally. And I think it's working. We're seeing the numbers through the Rio Grande Valley, which was the main focus of illegal entry, uh, gone, gone down, and they're moving to other border states. So it's working. I think, you know, it's, it's necessary to use the National Guard because the federal government has abandoned the state of Texas and other border states. They, they're not meeting their responsibility. So the, the, the state governors are having to step in and, and they're having to use the National Guard. And, uh, you know, kudos to Governor Abbott for having the leadership. And, and we should thank the National Guard for doing this job, which is very difficult. Yeah, absolutely. Um, grateful every day for those who protect um, this border and, and try their best to ensure national security uh, for American citizens. Uh, look, look, we were just talking about a state that's not technically on the border, but is definitely feeling the impact of the border crisis. What's happening in Aurora, Colorado? Um, our correspondent, Christina Thompson, brought the story of an alleged Venezuelan gang members who are taking over an apartment complex. I mean, the video itself, Sheriff, is just stunning to watch. Um, but, but what's happening here? And what does this tell you about the impact some of, some of these folks have when it comes to taking over control of part of the United States? One of the things I think people need to understand is that the cartel is in every single county in the, in the United States of America. This is no longer just a border problem. This is a national security problem. And it has to be looked at that way. We must make a fundamental change to the mindset and the methodology in which law enforcement goes about dealing with these problems. Because the totality is so much more than it was just a decade ago. We're going to have to engage and we're going to have to deal with this in a different way because... We have ultra-violent groups moving into the United States of America, and they are claiming territory in order to sell their drugs, move their slaves, and make the money that they need to make in order to support their organizations. We have to do something to dismantle these organizations or remove them from the United States of America once and for all. Yeah, Alfonso, just if you wanted to weigh in on that as well, watching the video, I mean, they are, they are armed to the teeth in Aurora, Colorado. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the direct result of, of Biden, uh, of the Biden-Harris administration. I mean, we're starting to see problems that Latin American countries face here in the United States. Trend Aragua is a violent gang from Venezuela. It started moving uh, because of the political instability in, in Venezuela to uh, other uh, South American countries, terrorizing those countries, leading to increases in crime. And now they're moving to the U.S., so this is what the immigration policy of the administration is creating. We're facing the problems that Latin American countries face. That's why immigrants want to come to this country to, to leave those problems behind. 
So these are very violent gangs. We already have problems with MS-13. Now we have a Venezuelan gang in Colorado. Uh, and, and by the way, they moved operations to, to our southern border. So now they have their headquarters in the southern border, and they've authorized their members to shoot uh, local uh, law enforcement. Unbelievable. Uh, Sheriff Roy Boyd jo joining us with that and weighing in. We do appreciate that as well as Alfonso Aguilar. Thank you both.